All right, getting started. Uh, so for those of you I know or don't know, my name is Claudia Page. I'm the director of product for the Fortnite Creator Ecosystem. I am responsible for the Creator Portal, which includes publishing, managing your presence on Fortnite, um, creator economy, and uh, as well as analytics. And it's really great to see so many familiar faces in the room. I know I've spent a lot of time with you guys this week. And for those of you that I haven't, happy to answer questions and chat after. Yeah, and I'm Katie Kendall. I'm a senior product manager in the creator ecosystem team. Um, I've been at Epic for almost three years now and joined the team last summer. Um, and my remit right now is the creator portal analytics, which we'll dig into today, um, as well as some other features in the portal you may be familiar with, like the technical tab. Basically, all of your favorite features, Katie. <laughs> okay, so we're uh, really excited to be here today to cover everything you need to know about growing your player base. Uh, we'll touch on the importance of iterating your islands, managing your presence, and surfacing learnings from many of you in the room, actually, on how to attract, engage, and grow your player audience. We'll end our session today with an additional opportunity to leverage IP in our ecosystem. We've made a really big push this year that we're very proud of, and we've launched 18 months ago, and we're continuing to evolve the creator portal into a place to um, manage your business in Fortnite. We're excited to have launched so many new features this year that provide you with the toolkit, actually based on a lot of your feedback, that allows you to be more successful. For example, we have launched a ton of new metrics to help empower you to run your businesses. We've started by providing better engagement and monetization metrics, telemetry to help you understand your player behavior better, as well as attraction metrics, so how well your island is at attracting players through the metadata. And we're just getting started. The end goal here is to give you all the essential analytics that is key to success on the platform. We're going to focus on some of the newer additions in the toolkit today um, and talk a little bit about how some creators are using these metrics to grow and improve right now. But before we get started, let's recap for some of you who might be UE devs in the room. Fortnite is a massive game with over 100 million monthly active users, which means developing in Fortnite gives you access to those players who spend over 60% of their time every week in creator-made islands. As of today, we have 134,000 islands published with UEFN, and we've paid out 479 million to creators with the creator economy. With the power of UEFN, all you have to do is create and publish. Let's move right along and dig into how publishing is the first step in attracting players. When you're publishing, Creator Portal provides you with everything you need to do to submit your island. The combination of your title, your description, thumbnail details need to accurately and authentically depict your island experience because it is the critical first step and factor in helping to attract players. We understand from player behavior that this is the single most important factor in helping them decide whether to play an island and even stick around in creator-made islands. Next, tags help you help players find your game in Fortnite, and applying them strategically helps players understand what your game is about. Finally, when you publish, you'll be opted into marketing by default. Uh, so keeping this enabled is a great way to let Epic know that you want uh, or are interested in promotion. Just for the record, if you have had Islands live and around for a little while, you can go back and add the setting in the creator portal as well. Awesome. So the ability to acquire players in the ecosystem is really step one on your island's journey to success. And we acknowledge that this has been a missing piece up until now. With impressions data, you can now see your thumbnails and how many views they've gotten across the ecosystem. This is going to be from places like Discover, Browse, Search, and your players' individual libraries. Now, we're going to be looking at getting more granular on, these on, -type, on this type of on-platform sources in the near future here. Alongside impressions, we've also launched clicks, which is simply the action a player takes of clicking on your thumbnail. But with this data, you now have a new view into how effective your metadata is at attracting potential players. We were so happy to be able to get these numbers in your hands and give you just a fuller picture on what that conversion funnel looked like. Let's dig into an example. Um, so click-through rate is just the ratio of clicks to impressions now. 
I know a lot of you guys are doing this math on your own. Um, as soon as mobile gets added to the clicks data, this is also going to be something that we'll be able to calculate for you in the portal. Omega creations actually use the impressions and clicks data to, click, to calculate a click-through rate. So this gave them a baseline to really test the composition of their island thumbnail. A simple test of just reorienting the thumbnail one side to the other, shifting the text and icons, um, doubled that, their click-through rate from players. Now, this wasn't an entirely scientifically controlled test, but exploring the different styles and seeing what works and is hitting um, really helps you come up with really compelling content. And we are actively exploring how we can empower you to make these rapid tests uh, on your own in the near future. Yeah. So that brings us to how to help you rapidly test and iterate your islands to unlock engagement. So I think most of you know this, but routinely playtesting your game is key. And we've recently improved this feature to make it easier for you to generate early and directional insights. Uh, now you can provide your playtest code to your friends, your family, your player community on platforms where you might actually be nurturing a beta group. Uh, and from there, you're able to adjust your island accordingly. Um, once, you, once you do that, you're actually able to see all of these viewable analytics in the Island Analytics tab. So the most successful games use this feature diligently, and I can't stress enough um, how important this tool is. With your Island Publish, you can and should continue to reiterate to see what's resonating with players. Look, don't be afraid to make changes um, frequently. For reference, our top 50 islands release on average two versions per week. Many of our top creators are well into the hundreds of versions at this stage. When you update, you can improve your island thumbnail and your trailer video to reflect changes, giving you a good reason to promote and engage your audience again on social media. Creators have grown communities across platforms and they benefit direct uh, from that direct feedback loop. You know which platform is best for you. Um, so by listening to your community, you're able to test changes faster, increasing your potential for players and playtime, which is going to lead to higher engagement. Awesome, so let's talk about engagement. So it's okay to be biased. I know some of you in the room might have a favorite chart. That chart might be session length. Session length allows you to see how long your players are engaged in your islands in their visits and help to show you where you can make adjustments to either stop early drop off or increase playtime. We've seen creators set realistic goals for their island metrics using things like session length um, to really test and consistently have those, those changes um, and continue to look until they achieve their goals. I'll pause here because we've talked a lot about the importance of iterating. And this is also something we've applied to our own products. So we have heard you that seeing session length um, by geography, by player type, maybe in a time series, would be really highly val valuable for you. And so the team is currently thinking about how we can iterate on this chart and make it better in future versions. Uh, let's dig into session length as it proved to be a game changer for a creator who is able to identify one of these opportunities and make changes to see immediate impact. So you notice here, Neighbor and uh, After session length launched, Neighbor began checking these metrics daily and noticed the trend of early drop off. So Notif specifically started thinking about the onboarding experience and set out with the goal of simply just changing the slope into more of a mountain. So he tested the hypothesis and they added a simple tutorial to the island and within a few days, the metrics had improved. As this approach worked very well, the team continues to focus on onboarding and testing out different approaches. I've also received an update that the churn has continued to improve since we last got this recap. So understanding the needs and problems that your players are facing and solving for them really strengthens their engagement on your island. Thanks, Katie. All right, now that your islands are getting engagement, let's talk about how managing your presence helps you reach players. Managing your presence on Fortnite lets you establish a reputation, giving players a name to associate with your brand, the genres and types of games that you create. I want to acknowledge that we've heard from many of you over the past year that ecosystem promotion tools are really important. We're actively investigating and investing in opportunities to be more supportive there, and we look forward to talking about them soon. That said, we did launch Apply to Epic's Picks 
from the creator portal to quickly submit your island for consideration in Discover. We also introduced a creator picks feature on creator pages that lets you promote up to 10 islands from other creators. This is available only on web right now. Please note that at this time, paid promotions and collaborations are prohibited from creator picks. Finally, I've spoken to so many of you over the past week and I've heard your feedback on social media and we've heard it on Twitter and we know just how important it is to protect your brand on Fortnite. We launched the unoriginal content reporting feature, a process that allows you to report islands for duplicating or modifying the promotional metadata, including your title, thumbnail and description. These have to be derived from your original metadata and genres are specifically carved out. When we receive a report, we use machine learning to review the live metadata from the submitter's island and we run it against all metadata in our database to identify potential matches. Along with the original published date, so we can account who was first to publish on the platform. From there, the report is handed off for human review by a highly specialized team of moderators who are provided with clear guidelines and trade to handle this. You may have heard of some of these processes yesterday in the trust and safety talk. That really closes out what we've brought forward this year, this year to help you better understand how to attract, grow, and engage your player audience. So I want Katie to kind of talk to you now about what's coming next. The juicy stuff. <laughs> All right, so not too long ago, we introduced a new monetization tab for you. So this contained all of the metrics that really influence your engagement payout on a monthly basis. So while this tab does include returning and retained players, and you already have day one island retention, we know you want more. We're working hard on bringing more slices of retention and deeper context around your players. So some of you may have heard this morning in the Discover chat. Uh, we'll also be launching a new section in the analytics tab with your satisfaction metrics. So this allows any creators that have gotten their feedback from the survey to actually view those results. So this can be from how they're ranking in the eyes of their players, if their game was fun or not, um, if it was too easy, too hard, or just right. We're really excited to continue to launch these new metrics that help you make fun and engaging islands. Now we'll also continue to expand on the basic metrics that you have to give you more meaningful insights. The designers, engineers, and analysts on the team are so passionate about making these metrics really impactful from a data perspective while also launching such visually compelling graphics. I can't tell you how many meetings we're in that we see a new potential chart and it's just a whole round of oohs and ahs. So this really sums up the future of analytics nicely is we're really trying to strike that balance of bringing you new metrics that are really high value while also improving the existing data set that you're already working with. And finally, we know how complex it is to get access to IP. We clearly understand that, we're Fortnite. Um, and we wanna give you guys the opportunity to work with IP more easily. One of the things that make, makes our platform more very special is how easy it is to work with LEGO IP using LEGO elements and minifigs. It allows you to build your own LEGO islands and publish to Fortnite. And we recently expanded these tools as of Tuesday um, so you can now access Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We've seen some really fun islands come out of LEGO, and now with TMNT, you'll be able to push the boundaries of innovation and produce new experiences that leverage familiar characters and components in exciting new ways, including all of our established assets. We're really excited to see what you do next with this toolkit.
I like how they ended with the cowabunga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for all the good feedback yeah. and questions. That was great. That was great.